Hey everybody, welcome back to Gun City. I'm Ferg, this is Connor, and today we're looking at Tika's TAC A1 model, which is a really oh. great release from Tika. They've been out yeah. for a few years now, yeah. but in terms of value for money, uh, Sarko, which is the company that makes Tika, makes a rifle called a TRG, and that is a tactical rifle, uh, often used as a long-range rifle, also used by a lot of special forces groups, that type of thing. And the cool thing about Tika's TAC A1 is you're getting a lot of the benefit mm. from Sarko without having to pay that same Correct. amount of money for the TRG. So Connor's here, and he's going to take us over the features, uh, features and benefits, what you would use it for of the Tika TAC A1. Take it away, man. Yeah, Ferg pretty well nailed it on the head before, guys, with how well the TAC A1 sits in the market. Um, there's probably not a rifle on our shelf here, and we've got a lot of them that really has the features that this guy does for the money. Yeah. Um, especially the fact that you're getting so much with the gun and the way that t have designed it is just really nice as well. Like you say, it's a um, sort of little brother to Sarko, so yeah. you've got a lot of that same technology going into it. Cool. Um, in saying that, guys, they do come with a muzzle brake in the box. So nice, um, this is called a directional brake, not a radial brake. So what that means is it just kicks out to the side rather than around. So if you're lying down prone and there's some dust or gravel anywhere, it's not gonna kick a whole bunch of stuff up. It's only going to the left and to the right. Fantastic, nice heavy brake too, well made. Yeah, um, this has got quite a nice heavy contour barrel on there. So if you're doing a reasonably ra fast rate of fire, so five or 10 rounds, it's gonna handle the velocity or the um, sort of rate of fire that you're putting out of that barrel yeah. it's going to hopefully keep those grips nice and tight nice and stable too because it's a little bit heavier it's not going to move yeah. around as much in terms of recoil yeah totally and so uh, moving to the actual chassis itself it's m lock so this is a, was a really popular uh locking system on ars obviously so um they've just used the same one here you can get a seven rail um, sort of where you M-lock rail, which you'll chuck yeah. on the bottom. You can mount a nice um, Atlas bipod or something to that if you wanted to. Yeah, very um, nice. They obviously do a full-length Picatinny rail on top. And can I just say, sorry to interrupt you there, but mm. when you pick up these different ri rails, or rifles, sorry, you look at the rails and you get a real sense of the quality yep. with which they're made. When, when these first arrived at our hands, we looked at the receiver, we looked at the rail system, yep. and it's just gorgeous. Mm. Like, it's just beautifully made. Yeah. No, like they're, they're really nice, like um, I've even set a few of these up for customers with thermal scopes, so yeah. um, you know they're shooting obviously prone from a truck, I wouldn't recommend you carrying this around in the field, but they've yeah. been a nice gun for that. Um, like Ferg says, everything about the receiver is super hard wearing as well. Um, they complement it quite well with this 10 shot double stack magazine. Yeah. Um, She's a heavy little beast. Yeah, that's right. So it's actually proper steel as well, which not many companies are doing that again these days, and they're just quite positive to feed. On some of the cheaper brands that are putting a rifle out like this, yeah, it just feels nice. a little bit, I don't know, it just doesn't, doesn't feel nice to load or anything like that. And, and it's a two-position release as well, which is, which is well, two-sided or yep. ambidextrous, which is really nice, so you can yep. release it from either side. Yep. And it's it's locked in there, yep. but it comes out really nice. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you, you nailed it. Yep. Um, they've got a rubberized ergo grip on there, so you've got stippled, um, this sort of stippled material on the actual grip itself. Um, you've also got a wee rung in it for where your fingers should go in line. Um, the bolt itself is coated in Teflon, so it's nice and smooth. Uh, it's just really slick in general. Um, well, you've also got that. a folding stock. So what you would do is close, oh, hang on, close that there up, oh. lift that up, and then you can take your bolt out once the stock is closed. But um, quite neat that you can have it away stored like that. Obviously the stock itself as well, fully adjustable. You get some spaces in the box. Yeah, nice. Um, and then you've got an adjustable cheek piece on here as well. So you can have it higher or lower. Most people will end up needing to do it a little bit higher because they'll have quite a chunky scope on here that you need to get proper eye relief for. But yeah, that's your general rundown of the Tika Attack A1 pick. Yeah, that's it. And so in New Zealand, Connor, what are most people using a rifle like this for? Well, there's a big scene in terms of precision long range shooting now. So if you were looking at getting a factory rifle straight out of the box to shoot well, this is perfect for that. Yeah. But also we find a lot of guys get buying these in two to three and just doing long range varmint shooting as well. And just trying to really see what they can stretch that sort of stuff out with. But you know, it's one of those things you could justify it for anything really. They're just pretty cool and versatile. And it's, it's great quality. Mm. The question that we get asked a lot on these is what scope should I put on it? Mm. Generally, you're outlaying a lot of money to be able to buy the initial rig, yep. and so you kind of can tend to skimp just a little bit on the scope. Yep. Talk to me about how important it is 
the scope that you buy for this to be able to give you the performance that you need? Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you just really need to, I suppose like Ferg says, not skip out on. It's like having a really flash European car and not chucking Pirelli tyres onto it. Mm. Um, you know, you don't want to have the $50,000 Merc and then not put run flats on it or whatever you're thinking. Yeah. Like, it's really nice having a real quality gun, but you're not actually going to maximise it unless you put on a decent quality optic. Um, here at Gun City we do package deals on a lot of our scopes too, so you'll find yourself saving a little bit of money on the scope and on the ring setup itself. Um, yeah. But yeah, the amount of, like, I've been here four and a half years now, the amount of times that we see a guy come in, gets this flashish rifle, but doesn't spend quite as much as he should on the scope, and then he comes yeah. back later on and yeah, just, I've never had anyone complain about spending too much money on a scope, it's just when they didn't spend enough, so. That's exactly right. So there is a long distance shooting scene in New Zealand. Mm. There are places you can go, uh, which you can Google long distance shooting in New Zealand, lots of competitions, and also places that you can go to practice. I know that Sparrowhawk in the South Island is one of mm. those, and there are some great reports of people going down there and being able to extend the distance mm. that they can shoot. So, would you buy a long range rig? Do you have one? And how far do you reckon you can shoot with it? Comment below.